Well, my therapist says <laughs> something amazing the other day. Um, you have one choice, to be right or to be loved. Okay. Do you want to be right or do you want to be loved? I just want to be loved. Hey, we you all know, do. I can set aside all those ideas mm -hmm. or things I think. Mm -hmm. I just want to be loved. Mm -hmm. What about the people that don't love you? Because they're out there. Hi. My name is Dr. Siri Satnam Singh, and I'm a licensed therapist. This week, I'm sitting down with a young woman who came from a religious upbringing to become one of the most famous singers in the world. This is Katy Perry. So keep calm, honey, I'm gonna stick around for more than a minute. Get used to it. Funny, my name keeps coming at your mouth because I stay with it. I'm up like swish, swish, bish. I uh, have been in therapy for five years, mm -hmm. and sit back, relax. Okay, well, it's cha it's changed my life. <laughs> yes, so we're gonna call you Catherine, right? Yes, Catherine. Catherine is here. Katie's yes. gonna take a rest for a minute. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I just like that's what I'm trying to do is to be seen as Catherine Hudson sometimes. Well, yes. a lot of times. Yes. When does Catherine come out and play? Um. A lot when I, I, Catherine comes out and play, plays when I'm with my sister and my family. Mm -hmm. um, but when I can just rest and relax and kind of like fall and surrender, that's when Catherine gets to come out because uh, sometimes, you know, I, I built up this Katy Perry thing that everybody knows and is fantastic, but it's uh, more of a facade than it is a real. It was very interesting. Did you notice your behavior? And K Katie? Oh, yes, my behavior, <laughs> yeah. And then Catherine sat back in the chair. Yes. So Katie gets a lot of attention, doesn't she? She sure does. Uh, Maybe almost too much. Yeah. So we were talking about the four primary archetypal presences for a woman. Yes. And Katie, we're going to give her some attention today. Sure. Is the priestess and, and actually a goddess. Thank you. And Worked hard on that one. Yeah, and so she's the one that really elevates others and inspires and actually goes into the unconscious and makes things come forth that is there that others don't have the courage to bring forth into the light. Catherine is the self. And Kath Catherine may be going underground a little bit. Catherine is the one that maybe has feelings that are not really acknowledged, expressed. Or evolved. Or evolved. Mm -hmm. Talk about that. What feelings are not evolved? I mean, I think Catherine is always there because Catherine represents this child and like I have such a connection to children because I am childlike and that's how I operate and that's how I express myself and in really simplistic feelings like joy and hope and happiness and dancing and singing and you know I I I um I guess that would be me being a child so that is Catherine so how was Catherine growing up as a child? I know nothing about your childhood. Catherine growing up. Well, I love my parents. Yes. And I grew up with a lot of born-again Christian beliefs. And so I um, had people around me, like-minded people like that. And I would say that it was a bit of a bubble, um, although I, I don't regret or think I could change anything. Cause... I want you to feel what you're saying. OK. I don't regret or think I could change anything because I know I can't. But um, um, it was it wasn't always that easy um, because you know it was very strict and um, I was a very curious person and um, uh, the curiosity sometimes sometimes it wasn't allowed because you had to have faith. 
So my, I, it was hard for me sometimes to be curious about what was going on in the rest of the world. So I'm hearing Catherine was even underground in your childhood experience. Maybe. My parents I love and they did the best job that, they did the best job. And we're not going to pathologize your parents by no means. No. But we want to deepen into Catherine and, and Catherine's experience in growing up in that family, in that environment. And so what I'm hearing is that you had these maybe fundamental or rules and ways of being in the world that made not have been in sync with who Catherine really was, because she was curious. Mm -hmm. Am I making any sense to you? Curious as a cat. What did some of that curiosity lead you to that was not permitted, or that you wanted to investigate? You know, I wanted to, I wanted to like work on my purpose, work on my craft, so that I could travel the world and like have these experiences, meet these people, like re-educate my mind. And um, that is partially why I started singing, is you know, to pop my own bubble, to get, oh, get out of my own situation. What were you trying to get out of? Um, I guess I was just trying to get out of one way of thinking. OK, what was that thinking like? I don't know anything about it. It was like, you know, it, w it was like just do as I say. No ifs, ands, or buts. And it wasn't, it was like, you know, it was, it was, it was based on um, my religious upbringing. And I just always, like, I have so many questions. I ask all the questions in the world, and all the questions in the world have gotten me to where I'm at now. Um, and I wasn't, I didn't ask, it's not that I wasn't allowed, it's just that, like, it wasn't normal for people to ask questions in my position. You know, the, the clients splits off their unconscious onto the therapist. I got very sad. I had some sadness when you were talking about that. I don't know if you're able to feel it, but it was split off to me. Am I connecting to something? Yeah, a okay. little bit. So I'm hearing that that was the adaptive personality. You know, you had to adapt to your environment and you had an instinctual truth. Yeah, it was that, something I didn't learn. It was yeah, so weird. It's like yeah. it came from nowhere. And that caused a spiritual alienation that you had to go against your own calling of your own individual soul. And but I loved all of it, but it was it always I always just felt like I was called for more. Called for more? Yeah. Uh-huh. And it was out there. Yeah. And I didn't know how to get it. And so I guess I, I, you know, started singing. That's how I got there. We sometimes are obliged to let go of old ways of doing things to have a larger life. And that's what happened. Yeah. That became Katie. Yeah. But Catherine is still carrying some. <sighs> well, it's not going to happen. You call the word for me. What I are guess the feelings? It's... I guess it's not going to happen in one day, right? No. It's going to it's going to be a process and that's why I That's what therapy is, a process. It's no destination. You're processing. No, I'm just like I guess I guess that like It's okay, Catherine. I guess that like you know I'm really strong as Katy Perry. Then sometimes I'm not as strong as Catherine Hudson and like And Catherine doesn't have to be strong. You know, people like talk about my hair, right? And they don't like it. Or they wish that like it was longer. And like I so badly want to be Catherine Hudson that I don't even want to look like Katy Perry anymore sometimes. Okay. And like, that is a little bit of why I cut my hair is because I really want to be my authentic self. Yes. Like, a hundred percent. And so it hurts, you know, when I don't feel like I can. Um. So what do you... 
Wow, that's... That's a lot to carry. Well, yeah, but... That dichotomy. Yeah, I know. I I mean, I did it. <laughs> you did do it. I did do you, it. And I you're made, doing it. Okay. I, I, I made the choice, Katie right? Katie is successful. I made okay. the choice, for sure. But, like, you know... These are two different presences. And also, like... The thing is, it's like women don't have to be, or people don't have to be just one thing, you know? And like you can grow, and I'm in my 30s now, and I'm not the same person I was four months ago, you know? And I think that's beautiful because of, of the re-education and the ed evolution, and like I love growing, I love learning, and um, you know, sometimes it's hard when people want you just to be like a time capsule. Yes. Of what you were. Um, even in like my own family and mm -hmm. things like that, mm -hmm. even with my friends, you know. But it's just my journey, I guess. I can't control anything else. So, your fantasy and your curiosity created this great <laughs> goddess. This, your fantasy did that. Your curiosity did that. So you must give yourself, yes? All right? Yeah, sure. At the I love, I'm so blessed. I understand. I love yes. my life and yes. I'm so blessed. And I know a lot of people have given me this opportunity and you know, I don't take it for granted. I don't take it lightly. No, and I no. love my family and my friends and mm -hmm. I try and do my best. Mm -hmm. Like my intentions, I always try and set the right intention every morning, but I'm human and yes. I'm living under this crazy microscope. And I made that choice, but it's not always like. Well, let's throw the word out there's a dichotomy, there's a, a real conflict between Katie and Catherine. Sure, because look at Katie Perry, she's so glamorous. Yes. She's rich, she's luxurious, successful, yes. and like Catherine Hudson, like, I didn't have any money, I didn't have any influence, I didn't have anything. So for you- So it's a bit hard to go back there. Can we say for your fans that you are presenting that you have the formula? Yeah, okay. for sure. But Catherine, who has a lot of hurt and unevolved feelings, I'm taking your words. He called it. Katie gets all the attention. Sure does. There's a <laughs> kahuna principle, it's all about success, that where we give our energy to and our attention to, that's what develops. That's what evolves. Yeah. So Katie is bigger than life, but Catherine gets a little bit of time that she can be just as evolved and happy and content. Like, I don't know if I even, I, I want to be seen and heard, but like I want to be seen and heard for real, I guess. And I think everyone wants to be seen and heard. Like, People don't want to be seen and heard just because of the pictures they post on Instagram or the filters that they pick. Like, that's not the head that lays down on the pillow, you know? Like, that's not the head that lays down on the pillow next to your partner. You don't get a filter. Mm -hmm. That's just real, true intimacy. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes, like, we hide so behind, like, all these things, like, Instagram or, you know, and I do the same thing. I create this character, but like, it makes it so much harder to be real and intimate with people. Yes. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes, because like they meet you for the first time and if they've been following you or in any circumstance, even your friend that you just meet for the first time, you see their Instagram, they're like a totally different person. They're like, who are people? Who yes. are they? I'm very respectful of you. It's like, you know, everybody wants a big house. I'm sure you have one. We all do. <laughs> yeah, we all want a big house. I, you know, like everybody dreams that way, yeah. of course. But we always spend time developing the quality of the house. What about the quality of the lives of people living in them? <laughs> yeah, and of that's course. That's what I hear you and that you're, you're trying to do today. <laughs> well, that's changing, doctor. Yeah. 
if you began to give Catherine attention, what would that look like? Well, you would see that she's a massive dork. <laughs> um, and that's coming out all the time. Yes. Um, I'm just a goofball, and I like to play a lot. Yes. I like to, I love humor, and I like to make people laugh. I like to laugh myself. Okay. Um, and I, I love music. I think you're recovering your childhood. Catherine never got a chance to play because Catherine had rules to do. Yes, Catherine couldn't play. Catherine had to, I don't want to use the word rigid, but would that be appropriate? Is that too strong? Yeah. No, I mean, it was a little rigid, Okay, yeah. it was rigid. So you couldn't dance and sing. I didn't know how to play, no. You didn't know how to play? I actually didn't even really know how to play with my nieces for a long time because I didn't even know what that looked like. Yes, yes. I was telling everyone last night, um, that, like, I just learned how to hug. Oh, wow. Because I was, like, I always thought it was, like, you know. Too intimate. Too intimate, like a sexual thing. Yeah, of course. Or, you know? Yes. Like, a hug is a sexual thing. That's Someone's right. going to feel my boobs yes. or something like that. And I didn't realize that that's not everybody's intention. Yes, yes, It's just yes. a hug. It's yeah. just to, like, connect. So I just learned that. So if, how old is Catherine? I think she <laughs> stopped growing at a certain age. And I think the fantasy of Catherine went into Katie. Yeah. All of that great childhood fantasy went into Katie and sure. made this bigger than life personality. Yeah. Okay. Sure. How old would you say Catherine is right 11. now? Oh, she, she's 11. Yeah. She's 11. Because I started singing when I was nine. Okay. Then I started realizing 11, 12, 13, I started going to Nashville. Yeah. To become more professional, you know? Yeah. To learn how to write a song. But yeah, I started getting turning pro at yeah. 11 or what have you. So could you say that's perhaps the reason that a lot of the feelings are unevolved because Catherine's only 11? Yeah. But I'm a quick study. You're a quick study. So now that you have the concept and the vision and the understanding, Catherine needs attention. I guess so. So Catherine is 11. So that means with relationships, she probably didn't get a chance to develop the art and science of dating and... Not yet. No. But I mean, I mean I've had some good ones and like... Yeah. You know, I love... I love them all in a, in a certain way, and they've taught me so many things. And maybe I'm a little older because, like, at 11, I'd be like, nah, 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 nah. Yeah, yeah. And now with relationships, even if they don't hit whatever figurative finish line you're supposed to hit, um, I I think they're that they all teach me something. So you know? you're maybe 16 because you've been dating. I've been dating, you've been yeah. Dating. But like, you know, um, I haven't found the person I'm. Or, or figured out how to have, you know, a child with someone um, yet, but that would be a goal that I'd want in the future. Okay. Um, but, you know, it was no one's fault. It's no. no one's fault. It's all just a lesson. So can Catherine be okay with herself that she's learning how to date and to have relationships and to learn what who yeah. men are and how they operate and... And yeah. maybe Catherine is not so evolved with her feelings and doesn't know how to be vulnerable and is scared to be vulnerable. They're scared just to hug. So Well, yeah, well, strangers. Strangers. So, I mean, of course, you start dating, he's a stranger. Yeah, I guess so. So then it's a real, it's a learning process. Yeah. You think you could give yourself some credit and time and space to develop along those lines and yeah. show the dork? <laughs> I want to show the dork. Show the dork. I literally want to show the dork. Like, uh -huh. I just want a dork to match. Because, like, I look for, you know, the fi there's five things I look for. Yes. And the five things I, I am looking for are, first and foremost, my love language is music. So I love music. 
And I love speaking through music, and I love okay. someone that understands music. You know, as simple as knowing, having good taste, and it could be someone that loves jazz, you know? Yes. They don't have to be in the music industry. Yes. And then second, a sense of humor, because life sometimes is just a little too Ugh. much unless you yeah. laugh. Yeah. And then third, um, I, I would like someone to be intelligent so that I can learn, whether it's emotionally intelligent, um, head intelligence, spiritual intelligence, and then fourth, uh, spiritual. Okay. I want someone that really, like, you know, knows that, like, there's something more than them. It just it doesn't have to be, you know, any belief system. It can just be that there's something more than them. It's not just us. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, I like someone that's powerful. I like someone that puts all of that power into play, you know, mm -hmm. the into action. Mm -hmm. Um, but, you know, and that's a tall order to ask for, especially for someone who's barely 16. <laughs> you know, I know, and like maybe some of it hasn't always been fair along the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Talk about that not being fair. Someone that didn't get you, somebody that did not understand that Catherine is evolving and she's not where she would like to be. You don't have well, to mention the name. Just no, I know, yeah. but I've had a, a, a lot of really nice ones, and one of them in particular has been like a really amazing example of a man, and you know, a gentleman. Um, and um, I had to push pause on that because I had to grow. You know, I couldn't grow together because like, Two halves don't make a whole. Two holes make two. Two holes make two. Okay. And so I had to grow. And, you know, I'm just like, I'm really grateful for someone like him who, um, like, mended my wings. And, you know, holds a space for me. so that I can't grow and doesn't judge me, you know, even if I, I can be, I can judge. Sometimes I'm a little judgy. But that's just my ego. And or maybe your upbringing. My upbringing, yeah. I mean, some that's... probably from some of my conditioning, but yeah. What do you think if your next date you introduce yourself like you did to me as Catherine? <laughs> 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 right? I guess wow. so. Well, one component that stood out to me that was very, he's got to be powerful. I mean, you said five. <laughs> you cannot have no little weak. Um... Well, I just need, what I, what I would like, what I would love is just someone that, you know, maybe has done the work as well. Yes. You know, meaning like has dug deep, has pulled out whatever is, not serving them in their life. They are a whole person, a healed person. That's what I want, but like I have to be that as well. I have the image of a powerful man, just like Katie, who's also 21. In his- Sure, I got five more years. <laughs> five more years. You know that he's spent a lot of time in business, his career, making money. I, I actually to. like, I just want someone that understands. Understands. You. you know, and it doesn't, ha they don't have to have money. They don't have to be famous. They just have to understand. And sometimes in order but to- powerful. But powerful, but sometimes to understand, you, had a, you have to definitely be in these fields. But I could understand a man who was powerful, who also hadn't developed uh, his emotional self. Yeah. So what are you feeling now? What feelings are there? <sighs> relief. Relief. A little bit of relief. Like expansion. Yes. You know? Like, I feel like it's not, like, some people are just gonna look and have a judgment, you know, and be this. Who cares? 
Who cares? I can't, I really can't control what they think. No. I never could. But I guess I can live my most authentic self and like. Authenticity. I just gotta be the most authentic yeah. person. So if you're inauthentic, we can anesthetize through substances. Has yeah. that ever happened? Oh yeah. Okay. Which I've, substance? Um, alcohol. Alcohol. Um, I've had a dance with the devil. Okay. Um, I'm, you know, I'm sensitive as it is, and so like I can't, like I'm that girl that has two glasses, right? And I'm like, um, even like one glass of wine, okay. and so I just really have to be balanced. I have, I have to really know my limits, and so sometimes I have to take a break. Okay. And especially when like I'm I'm not in a good place is that's when I use it, you okay. know, to numb myself. Inauthentic. We go on the ways of what when you're inauthentic, the yeah. risk you can externalize with anger. Well, sometimes I felt like you know, I would have to like have a couple of drinks to go somewhere because I am Katy Perry yes. out in the outside world. Yes. And so it would be hard, you know to like be tired or it would be hard to be like, you know. Yeah. It's always being on, so. Uh, so what do you do with your anger? You're upset, you're, do you, do you become hysterical or out of control? Well, I would say anger, ang angry, like, but that's because I, I let it build. Sometimes I have to swallow things. And yes. That's why I meditate. Yes. That's helped me, that's why I do yoga now. Yes. You know, that's helped me and like, honestly, I'm in therapy with my family and it's amazing. It's so beautiful because like, you know, my family gets to talk and be a family. And like, you know, I get to hear my father speak who I love so much. And I get to hear my mother speak who I love so much. Okay, just feel the love. And let it let it move through you. And I you know, I didn't really hear them. Yeah. And it's and I'm trying to listen for them more and hold a space and have compassion for them and like love them in an authentic way, you yeah. know, because it wasn't always easy. Because yeah. we have very different um, viewpoints. But yes. now we can agree to disagree in loving space and so I'm just so grateful for this kind of tool. And I know that this is a, this is available for a lot of people. They just have to like investigate it to you go did, online and find it. You just mentioned two other risks for being inauthentic. Uh, you can internalize it and you become depressed. We've been there. Did you ever have some bouts to where Katie just couldn't, didn't want to go on? Yeah, I, I um, wrote a song about it. Okay. That's how I process, uh, is I, I write songs. And you get rid of those feelings. Those well, yeah, feelings. some of them. Some of them don't come out okay. fully, and that's why I still, have, I still do the work. Which song was that? What lyric comes to your mind? By the Grace of God. Can you say a few of those lyrics? They're very close to you. They're very close. It's hard, like I say, get on tour. And it's hard because I'm ashamed. Oh. Because, of course, Katy Perry's so strong. We're but, talking to Catherine. She's sitting back. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's hard because I feel ashamed that I would even like have those thoughts, you know? I'd feel that low or that depressed, but... Then if you didn't get them out, you could act them out. We don't want that. No. We don't want that. So it's good that you got them out. Yeah, and I wrote that song by the grace of God because, you know, I do believe in something much bigger than me, and I call that God for me, and, you know, I get, to li I get to live this wonderful life and I work very hard at it. Yes, you do. And I've been given this gift, but um, I know that like God has his hand on me 
And I know that sometimes I go through things and I think they're just too intense. I can't handle them. And then he swoops in and he shows me that it's his grace. Wow. Wow. That brings me through it. It's okay, let it go. It's just Catherine here. Catherine does not have to be strong. You're being Catherine. Remember I said at the very beginning there was some slow sadness coming through me? This is the sadness of Catherine that you're now feeling and allowing to come forth. Bravo. She this wants is to called, let that go. This is called authentic. And then then also what we really don't want to happen, if you're inauthentic, not just you, but all of us, is that you can somaticize it. What's that mean? Oh, that means symptoms will come in your body. And so often I've worked with individuals who have, quote, incurable diseases. Sure. And they've gone into a remission in dealing with the e mental, emotional component, yeah. that the physical symptom disappeared. The symptom is the key to the cure. So you see, in, if we make a choice of being inauthentic, if Catherine can't live, then you're at risk for anesthetizing through substances, externalizing through anger, internalizing through depression. <sighs> We don't want that. No, thank you. None of that. No, thank you. So shame and hurt and sadness and love and joy, wherever we are, here we come. I always say nobody can die for you and nobody can live for you. If you don't live for you... You're wasting your life. So I hear that some of the rigid rules in your family are breaking down to where now they're a little bit more op an open system rather than a closed system. There's feelings and communication, which are terrifying, I think. Yes. Uh, they were terrifying for us, maybe terrifying for other people. Yes. And um, we are so close now and like we're on the journey of healing and I'm so grateful. Like I love my family. I love putting pictures of my family up. I, I, I've seen that the older that we get, we sort of relax a little bit more. Sure. We're not as rigid and doctrinaire and judgmental. We like, we want to be loved and appreciated. Well, my therapist says <laughs> something amazing the other day. Um, you have one choice. Um, and I'm going to paraphrase because I'm going to get sure. it wrong. Um, to be right or to be loved. Okay. You know, do you want to be right or do you want to be loved? Okay. I just want to be loved. Hey, we you know, all do. I can set aside all those ideas mm -hmm. or things I think. Mm -hmm. I just want to be loved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What about the people that don't love you? Because they're out there. Hi. <laughs> they're out there. What do you do with those? Well, I used to try and combat that, mm -hmm. but that's not. I can't, again, I can't change that. Okay. And I see, like, even the people that don't like me or the people that have a problem with me or whatever, first and foremost, I'm sorry if anything's ever been misunderstood. I try and move and work with so many pure intentions with integrity and character, and I just get it wrong sometimes. I would think people who don't love you probably don't love themselves. I can't control whatever people think. No, you think. can't, but you could maybe have that understanding. Yeah. That, you know, the place that you are now where you're letting your parents be who they are, you're just experiencing them, those individuals are, are not letting you be who you are. There may be some of the split off of your family of origin, your, your upbringing, to where there was some judgmentality there rigidity, and it still may be well, yeah, manifesting outside of you. Sure, if you didn't believe in the way that was told yes. to believe, then you were not a part of the conversation. Were you ostracized or shamed or sure. talked about? Absolutely. Talk about that. Um, 
I loved learning even in church. Um, but like, you know, and my, my mom and I, we have such a great relationship and like, I sang, I used to sing this song in church called Come As You Are by Crystal Lewis, who I love, yeah. Crystal Lewis. And like, I feel like sometimes like the church does more judging than loving. Okay. And that's why it doesn't feel safe for me sometimes. Okay. And like, if I was to come as I am, how would I be accepted? Because this is who I am, mm -hmm. you know? Or this is who I'm developing into. Mm -hmm. So I think my mom understands that even more so now yes. than ever. That, you know, less judgment, and I deal a lot with judgment. I've been very judgy in the past, but less judgment, more compassion. More come as you are. So the word God is real for you. Oh, absolutely, 100%. Okay. So does God judge us? He lets us live, or <laughs> he, she, whatever, lets us live he gives and make us free our will. mistakes, and, and we still live. We still have a chance. I mean, yes, I believe in, you know, the cause of law and effect. Okay. So I know that every action has a reaction. Okay, I agree. And I believe in positive and negative and yin and yang and all okay. those things. Yes. So I don't think that like you can say I'm a good person and go out and do the opposite and that breed good things. Okay. So I, un I understand that and that's kind of my philosophy is just like living by cause and effect. I think that's absolutely correct. I don't think there's a right or wrong because... What, who's to say? I mean, you may have come from a world or a place mm -hmm. where that's right for you. Mm -hmm. but that the, was your culture. That mm -hmm. was like, how are you? How were you raised? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There are some like basics. Yes. But yes, those are like the Ten Commandments. <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, but even who do we dare bring that up? Like in terms of killing another individual, there's an absolute with that. We have a government that can go to war and kill people, and it's okay. We can kill an individual in self-defense. It's okay. <sighs> we can kill a person to get their money. That is not okay. You'll go to jail for that if you get caught. Hmm. So I'm, there's no absolutes in there's the creation no is what I'm getting at. Right. Wow. There's a labyrinth of choices. <laughs> and we make choices, and those choices will have consequences. So how do you know these days when the choice is going to bring the consequences that you want. Where do you go? Is it here? Is it here? Is it your staff? Is it your therapist? It's a combination. Okay. It's a combination, but I try and go here. You know, because the head will just like... Tell me about it. It'll try and overthink the whole thing. And like the heart will just say, wait, patience, save his draft. You know, let the universe take care of it. It's not your job. Mm -hmm. Like, revenge is not yours mm -hmm. or what have you. Don't be so catty. Don't be such a troll, you know, on the mm -hmm. internet. Mm -hmm. Like, try and be an example. Be kind. Mm -hmm. And I have great people around me that I've had my whole career. And my sister and my brother and my parents now are great reflections mm -hmm. of kindness and love mm -hmm. and empathy. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a combination of things, but I really try and lead with my heart, you know, which like is slow, too slow for everyone else, oh. but it, it, uh, it Why takes time. Why do you say that? Well, the head is all about time. Do you know? Like the head is all about time. It's like, you gotta do this, gotta do this, blah, blah, blah. It's all about like strategy. Oh. But the heart is like, sometimes- I feel it. <laughs> sometimes it's like, this strategy is strange and it's giving me a yellow light. It's making my heart turn yellow. And what do you do with those situations? I gotta you? listen to them. And you go against your heart and go into your head. Sometimes I do. And sometimes my ego comes into play, which is my head. Okay. And I make decisions sometimes like that that aren't great. And do you get consequences you don't like? Oh yeah, sure do. 
So what is that telling you? I, my intuition, which is my heart, I think mostly, right? Hmm. When my mind, my, where does your intuition come from? There is a meditation I learned where you develop your heart to develop your intuition. Have your sixth sense as your intuition. So I have a little bit but of something. The two of that. together, oof. Yes. This is Katie's arena. No, this is both. This is both, okay. This is both, because if okay. it was just Katie's arena, you would only see her in small segments, not doing this, you okay. know, not living life fully, because nobody needs to see Thank that. you for correcting me, because <laughs> no, you okay. just evolved, and I was holding the old paradigm. The no. way Catherine and Katie were separate, and you went there. I want them both to exist. Much to my surprise, and I wasn't even aware. You see how you integrated them? You're yeah, saying, I stood up for Catherine. You could be a different configuration now, where Catherine is integrated Absolutely. with Katie. More heart. Wow. Well, we have this practice at our end of our sessions and okay. you are acquainted with the angel cards and you live in that arena anyway Thank you. as a goddess. Angels are all around you. Thank you very much. So let's see what the angels are going to tell you. So angels, what shall I learn now? Isn't that appropriate? Freedom to be who you are. I'm a little tearful. The rule is I shouldn't cry more than you. I feel your ecstasy. Thank you. Thanks for Appreciate being such you. a great teacher. I yes. can keep this card, right? <laughs> <laughs> that means I got a bad hold on the set. <laughs> I don't know. You okay. want me to put it in? <laughs> OK. Take a picture, internet freedom. <laughs> I want this one. I'm going to send you another okay. set. OK, fine. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Thank you so much. You're quite welcome. I appreciate you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you.